young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Check one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, check one, two. Welcome to the Justin Moore Podcast, rocking and rolling. How about that? We're in Arkansas, and Justin is manning the machine today, and it's working. Well, knock on, <laughs> knock on wood. Um, yeah, we're here together. It's it's so much easier to do this when we do this together because we can troubleshoot things <laughs> together. You got a makeshift mic stand which is not really a mic stand Dude, today my, y'all my desk literally says justin i am imagining your ass right here thanks jimmy kimmel this is the uh this is what was it the ballad of clarence the uh the stool or something like that um, this won an emmy by the way but that's what i'm using for a desk okay, today what was well, uh, it was the you know it came up um on it came up on the morning show recently because nobody had a clue what we were talking about right it's been a few years and i had actually forgotten too and i finally i I remembered you know Mm -hmm. but it was the uh the ballad of klaus jorstad klaus jorstad that's right yeah which is i mean it was so over the top ridiculous so for for those out there listening and watching that don't know um we were asked to be the musical guest on jimmy kimmel and so we did that we played somebody else well i believe is our single at the time if i'm not mistaken and they said hey would you mind being a part of this little spoof funny video thing and sing this song which was just again over the top ridiculous it it was a true story that a a, a guy in Canada or Sweden, Sweden or somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not that those are anywhere close to each other, but uh, it was somewhere not in America. Had you can see, I don't know if you can hold it up to the camera, but I know you did. But so this this stool is from IKEA and it has these little holes in it. And the guy was using it as a shower stool. This is a true, this is a real news story. Yeah, this was on the news. And and the guy had gotten one of his balls <laughs> stuck in this stool. That's not I don't much, know if it was this stool. I hope it was. Was it IKEA? Yeah. It was just like this stool. And they wanted to do this spoof video on it. We did it. It was ridiculous. I've said that multiple times now. But a lot of fun. And And as JR pointed out, it ended up being nominated for or winning. Yeah, because you went in and like did some this. kind of comedic Emmy, which I mean, I, it's why I say, I, you know, we talked about the country award shows last year. I've won one country uh, award and a couple of um, uh, CMAs. No, oh. um, like the faith driven awards, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christian awards for uh, if heaven went Dove so far away, like that. that kind of stuff, and. Um, and I finally get an Emmy because I sing about a dude getting his ball caught in the <laughs> right. store. It's just, I mean, and you, but you just, sang it straight. It was like it was, it was yeah, it, it was it was serious, but it was it wasn't serious. Yeah, it was a ridiculous song, but you sang it straight, and they had the montage with the with the camera and the lights and stuff, and it was just anyway. And this thing, poor guy, these holes ain't about big as a quarter. Uh, whew, that was a bind. So anyway, we got a makeshift. Off, I've got a makeshift office day. Justin's got his office looking nice. I was actually trying to look for some spare parts earlier. It used to. I just go out the hallway, we chucked them all, <laughs> dig yeah. through spare parts to make things work. Where our spare piles down, but it's okay. It's nice in here. And um, I usually would ask you as soon as we kick the show off, how's the weather in Arkansas? But I can look out the window and tell you it's just a little cool and rainy today. Kind of, kind of rainy and nasty. What? Yeah, probably in the sixties. Probably. Maybe. Something like that. It's supposed um, to be seventy something tomorrow. Before we, yeah. Before we go any further, uh, what do you want from the grill? Um, I usually get a salad, but yeah, just because I like them. But I mean, they got it burgers. They got usually there's just I just special. do a burger. I just do a burger all the way, no lettuce and tomato, French fries. I'm with an all American family. I'm gonna eat me an all American <laughs> meal. By God. <laughs> I've had a good time today. Let me tell you what. Uh, if anybody don't believe. But lettuce and what? No lettuce and tomato. 
If you don't believe it's cake, and I know I'm gonna get in trouble for that. Uh, it's just how I roll. I can't eat the lettuce and tomato. Tomato. I just always say save it for somebody who'd really enjoy it because I may or may not even like it when I bite into it. So, but I can tell you this: about three fifteen around this house, buddy, it goes from quiet to chaos <laughs> in, in about four seconds. And you guys may bear witness to some of that and and hear some of that today because um, it's a big week. We got uh, you know March Madness starting. To, to tonight as we record this at, on Tuesdays as you guys know who listen each week when it comes out on Thursday uh, the Razorbacks play tonight uh, if you're listening to this on Thursday um, they're in the west bracket so Vermont uh, we played Vermont which is a kind of a senior laden team which kind of always gives you some nervous yeah uh, nervous moments uh if you're a fan of the higher seed mm-hmm. which the Razorbacks are but anyway um looking forward to that uh as you listen to this on Thursday tomorrow night we'll be playing with George Strait uh in Little Rock which is is really really cool and exciting and uh we've been watching YouTube videos we'll go over our Arizona run that we just had and got home from and um but as jr pointed out we've got practices and we had a ball game canceled tonight i didn't even tell you we were supposed to drive an hour and a half tonight for ella to play on the seventh grade or junior high team whatever you want to call it um thankfully due to weather it got canceled tonight because uh this coming sunday we leave to go on another ski trip so we've got a lot going on a lot going on but as as jr also said you know, I know the label and my management and everybody goes, man, why can't you just get me these liners? Why can't you make this phone call? Why can't you respond to that email? You you saw it. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, we we love having uh, a big family and, and, you know, the kids around and all that, but it's not conducive to getting work done. Right. That, that's for sure. So even, even with it's, me here, it's a little crazy. Even me here playing deflector, I'll get two of them and go to the playroom or help do this or we'll do that. It's still, it's uh, it's just a lot going on. You know, it's like when they first came in, I heard your mom open the door and here comes the cat. Here comes the two dogs chasing the cat. Here comes the kids. One, one, they oh, all yeah. hollered different stuff that I, that I heard South. He just talked from the entire time he opened that door. He never shuts up. Me, looked at me, just started a new conversation. Just yeah. kept on rocking. But, never but, shuts up. But it was great. But yeah, it's, it's again it's 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 really fun and it's a whole different environment than i grew up in mm-hmm. you know being an only child but it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot it's, and I know, kate's off, a little stressed uh today because she's been with them for four or five days we've been five gone. days we've been gone yeah. and they're mom 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 can you do this mom can you do that mom 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 <laughs> And then we have we have guests, you and Sharice. We have uh, also Rich and Heidi, our, our our great friends from from Pittsburgh, coming down for the the, the, the show with with uh, King George, uh, which we're excited about. But Absolutely, got to clean up rooms. Got to I mean just some. And and this is embarrassing. I'll go ahead and admit this. We don't have lights on it, but we still have not put our christmas tree i saw up. that in there and thought boy that's embarrassing boy it's getting a little late in the season it's, it's already it's it's basically it's, it's for, spring and kate it's knows, officially spring and kate knows me if louisiana after, if it, your tree's up at mardi gras that's no good yeah you, you it's, got something wrong if it's up past mardi she gras she made us some good gumbo to send us to yes, arizona with so i can't really give right. her too much crap yeah uh, but yeah i've been begging for that to come down for about two and a half months <laughs> yeah. we still have them on our house as well lots but we finally figured out how to turn them off. Oh, okay. Well, at least you got... You get, you because know. they've been on until like last so week. So every day the Christmas lights were still coming on. Oh, yeah, night. yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I could not find... They were on a light switch, and I could not find the light switch. to, And it was in some random place like in Kate's office. And it's on a timer, so it just came on so every So it night. just came on. And so people would ask me down at the store, and it's cool. They're like, well, your lights still look good. And I'm like, <laughs> I know I'm so embarrassed by this. It's it, like the opposite of... Fa- it's it's so opposite re- of Christmas yes, it's, vacation. It's ridiculous. He couldn't have to figure out how to get his own. You the can't figure out how to get yours off. Biggest hillbillies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The so yeah, it's funny. Uh, Vanessa down at the store, who kind of runs the store down here in, in Poe, and is like, she goes, I crack up every time I drive home from work and your lights are still on. I go, yeah, well, the people that, so the, the, the guys that did it, um, they come and put them up and they, and by the way, 
just a uh, bit of advice out there. Um, I did it for a year or two, put them on our house. But you can find people, at least here and I'm sure everywhere, that do it for actually very little money. And usually what they do is they come pack them all up. They go buy the lights. They put them up. They come pack them all up, and they store them for you all year. Oh, so you don't even have to keep them yeah, up? Yeah, so putting lots on our house was like, I don't know, three, four hundred bucks, whatever. Wow. So, I mean, it's three or four hundred bucks. I get it, but it also saves me from having to climb up on the roof. Yeah. Hours that I could yeah. be doing. So, my point in saying that is they were supposed to have come back around New Year's and take them down. They never, they never did. Um, and we've called and called and called. I guess they don't want our business any longer. <laughs> I don't know. But um, but next year, if your kids or your wife or whomever are, are you know, begging to get lights yeah. put on the house. And you got to work and you got a baby. And it's, life- I mean, some things, to me, are just worth paying for. Right. And I'm fairly frugal. I mean, not yeah. crazy, but... Uh, <laughs> It's it's well worth it yeah. to me. Not I like, climb up on the. Well, I mean, you know the pitches on this roof are yeah, ridiculous. and the so. storing and the knowing how to put them up right and right. working and make and you all you know you know they're gonna come on. Here's your switch. And, blah, and blah, if blah, they blah. don't work, because inevitably there's all just like Christmas vacation, yeah. which you mentioned, there's always gonna be one out and the whole thing goes out and you right. got to be a. You call them, you go, hey, they're not working. They drive out, fix it, boom, done wow. on, on a timer. You ain't got to turn them on and off. And, yeah, you know, so. Yeah, that's anyway, very I don't, that's that's really random. You know, but. and it and it and it's uh, funny you say that because we were talking about it, we were just talking about Christmas lights a few weeks ago with Basil because of him taking the um, the big Christmas light show from Little Rock, you know, guy who was all into the lights and took it down to Elvis's house and yeah. stuff, and they got to go Grace to Elvis's Land. house. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's a great so, idea yeah. too. And you think about this. Here's a good one for you guys. If you're going to go on and do something around Thanksgiving out of town, get these people to come and have it done. When you get back, your wife will probably be ecstatic. Yeah, there you if go. If you get that done, why, you know, nobody has to deal with it. Nobody in and out of your house. And maybe you can sneak that in as a, even a uh, a Christmas present. Yeah, I don't know. Here's a present uh, to the family. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> so anyway, hey, yeah, you mentioned we we did we had I. I don't know about you, but I was glad to get back out on the road. I mean, I love being off. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, man, when you get to go play big shows and see friends and a bunch of family and different people when we get out on the road and, you know, just just traveling. I mean, we've done it for so long. I just kind of got to get that itch out every now and then. Um, but we went out to Arizona. We we did, we did took the bus because flying, just to be honest, flying's awful. And no one, it wasn't it's any no fun, fun before COVID. And now it's not. It's less fun and it's three times as expensive. Yeah, and now it's just sheer misery misery so we took the bus we rode the bus two days out there did two shows and rode the bus two days back uh our schedule's a little off our, our mental you know and, and timing of sleep schedule and all that rhythm's kind of off but uh um, a little foggy besides that i had a good time great crowds very energetic good crowds had got to play uh heath sanders Stephen paul were on both shows with us um we got we had to party with the band listen to some george yeah. Strait song watch roger just scream crazily <laughs> Yeah, it was it was really good, man. Um, and you, I'm always concerned about when you, you know, we've done shows throughout this whole uh, COVID deal where you know you had to push them back one, two, three, four, six, eight times, and sometimes the shows suffer from it, whether it be ticket sales or or whether it be you know people still being concerned about being in public or having or, to move or, venues or, or move, move venues. Um, and, and I was, I was in really pleased with the, the shows, the turnouts, the, the fan support. I mean, it was really, really good. I, I had a, a really good time, mm-hmm. uh, at both shows and we were in Tucson, uh, and then Prescott Valley. Um, and the crowds there, we're, we're awesome yeah so. i can always tell when we come out for anybody's been in the show the last uh year or so since we got the new set uh hank williams um hey good looking is the song y'all kind of walk out on to as the band gets ready before they start the first number for you to come out and uh it's really cool because you know i don't i'm getting my ears ready to put in but i don't have them in yet because me and you are still talking backstage and you can hear the crowd hey good the whole you can feel that yeah. power of the whole crowd kind of sing along what you got yeah. cooking? and then i know it's like oh it's gonna be fun yeah you kind of know what you're in for <laughs> yeah. and the, the 
the cool thing I, I thought about that the other night when you mentioned it. I thought, man, how cool is it that that song is what seventy 40, years old, yeah, so from the sixty late 40s. years old. Yeah. Well, then it'd be potentially eighty, 80 years, years old. old, probably eighty seventy-five um, years old. And people still sing along <coughs> right. with it. Like that's yeah. that's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, he was a Williams, you know. You know. He, he was a Williams <laughs> first first big time. He's the he's the original rock star. Guy. Yeah. Hank Senior's the original rock right. star. Yeah. He he was Hillbilly Shakespeare. He wrote it. He played it. He lived it. He yeah. he created the next greatest of all time. Yeah. I mean, dressed yeah. to the nines. Oh yeah. Um, you the know, whole thing. He, 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 he kind of moved. Bus. He kind of moved a little more. Oh yeah, he did. Than, his, he did the, the, did the leg thing. Almost Dwight like a took Dwight a little Yoakum of that. Kind of oh, deal. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And so custom um, Cadillac had a driver oh, yeah. to drive around in Cadillac. It wasn't buses back then. So he just somebody just drove him in a Cadillac around I mean, the how, nicest one in Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah. The dealer would give him one, take off. Just, just really cool. Yeah. So, but, but I knew the crowds were going to be good. And 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 you know, throughout the night, you know, y'all got the set rearranged and some new stuff with the new songs in there and stuff. The new single, which is rocking up the charts, by the way. I know a few people yeah. ask me what the single's at. I think it's in the low thirties. Thirty three last week. Yeah, but I so, haven't. I've been kind of since we ain't been on the road. I ain't been looking at charts as much. So my bad on that. The charts I, used to be. It's it's weird. Like countdown shows where where you get a lot of extra spins. Um, and. If you're listening and you're going, what the hell is he talking about? Forgive me, but I know there probably are some out there who understand what I'm saying. A spin is every time it's played on the radio. It's That's called a, a spin. Um, and so once you get on the countdown shows that are syndicated, you get a lot more spins and you get them at, at, at parts of the day where it, you, get, you gain more points. I mean, there's this whole convoluted system that we we use still and i have no idea why we do it but that's what we do in our our industry mm -hmm. um but because i know a lot of people that are just like irritated by it but uh but nonetheless that's that's kind of the way it works in a nutshell and when i first started first probably half of my career uh it was a big deal when you went top 40 because they were top 40 uh shows countdown shows now and you guys may or may not have realized this or, or kind of caught on to this in the last i don't know six seven years or whatever th that's changed to top 30 right so it's a big deal to get top 30 uh, because all the countdown shows are now top 30 you know you used to be um the top 40 top with 40 countdown. so and so oh, or yeah. so and so yep. or you know bob kingsley or, mm -hmm. or um and there are some stuff still some top 40 ones but the but anyway I, I i digress but um we're we're getting really close to top 30 and somebody told me recently that this was close to or is our fastest rising song yet which i don't know what to attribute that to because we've been doing it for now 15 years uh but i think that's that's certainly beats the alternative yeah. I and mean, that's a that's a good thing so thank you guys if you've you know, requested it or, or or bought it or streamed it or, or whatever. So, But it's called With a Woman You Love. It's uh, the first single from a new album that'll be out. I, I really don't know. I'm guessing probably fall, late summer, early fall, if, if I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah, and um, that's, that's interesting to know because a lot of people wouldn't know, and I still sometimes right. learn new things about it. I've been doing it almost 20 years and you know you learn new things about how all that works yeah um but yeah and i knew and you know what's i'm talking about songs and and charts but so i was kind of going with that is they um at the show it's still it's cool throughout the night as you're playing all the all the hits um you still hear people calling out just the randomest songs oh, off yeah. albums and a girl one girl somewhere got bad because you didn't you didn't on the spot know uh hell on a highway and it's like was, uh it, we're not even you know we're walking away to the bus it was kind of caught us off after the show <laughs> she there was like the skywalk i guess yeah. you'd call it deal a little bridge going from the yeah. upper deck to the parking lot or something and basically cussing me because i don't know hell on a highway i'm like i, I just played for two hours i i mean it's something like this you know and <laughs> that wasn't good enough it wasn't good enough no <laughs> and then i asked her i said well, what we'll say you sing it he'll do it again she yeah. didn't know it either and i said well come on you can't give yeah. us a hard time there's another i tell you the other thing that, <laughs> that i i was going to address that I, I didn't even tell you the other day because i forgot but um this has happened over the course of my career and i've seen it at 
shows not my own, but it's a, I don't know if this is, you guys can answer, uh, on our social media. Cause I'm curious if this is a thing. Um, so there's a guy, it's a couple, it's a guy and a girl, I'm guessing 30, I don't know, late twenties. And they're rocking, having a good time. I look over at them, uh, stage left down front in the pit. And this was night number two. And the guy's flipping me off. And that, that's happened at numerous yeah. shows. And remember, I've had you go address it with people, and they're like, oh, no, I love him. I'm just. No, they're wanting, they're wanting you to do more middle fingers. Oh. They want you to do more middle finger. Yeah, I wouldn't have Because I was like almost angry at the guy and it, it distracted me yeah. for a little bit. No, I went and talked to a guy at the pit a couple okay, months ago well, and was like, go. bro, that, what's the deal, man? Why are you what what are you mad? What's up? Well he's, then he's well, not right, more middle fingers. It's funny bro. because right after that I saw him like singing along and dancing, yeah. smiling, and I'm like He just wants you to put him up. Yeah, I'm like, well, is this a thing that I'm unaware of? And there you go. You just answered my question. I meant to tell you that the last time, but after it was resolved, I realized he wasn't just being disgruntled. Maybe one middle finger and, like, hold up a number two or something. I don't know. (laughs) It's very confusing just to get flipped off. (laughs) Yeah, right. In the middle of, like, singing if heaven wasn't so far away or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's strange. I'm going, like... Sometimes, what did I? What did I do to you? Yeah, like, in our in our crowds, an all ages crowd too. So if somebody's cursing to to the point where like we can hear them on stage and there's little kids around, I'll just be like, "Come on, man!" I mean, yeah, because they're, it. they're be fired usually up, are, but just don't use the f bomb over, you know, and stuff like that over and over. In and front we're of not kids. look, we're we're not holier than thou, no, and no, no. and I mean, I cuss in the show. Yeah. I mean, I try to keep it to a minimum. Used to do more. Um, <laughs> what drinking or cursing? Both. Um, but well, one kind of fed the other. Yeah. Um, but um, it's just you got to be aware of your surroundings. If there's yeah, little ears I mean, around, just you there, know. And there's usually, I would say, every night there's a handful near or on the front row of mm-hmm. probably five to. 10 year old yeah, or whatever kids. and so i it, that's kind of calmed me down a little bit and mm-hmm. i've i've tried to you know if you'll notice out it shows like it, i make sure every kid has a pick that i use playing guitar before i throw it out to adults right. or hand them out to adults that's just and i usually walk around the i me, usually take a, so. a pack of them in my pocket and i walk around the edges where people i know you can't get to and i walk the bowl and if i see little kids i'll just right. go it, you know, yeah, but that because you know that's the, that's it. I mean, I, we love the kids, but we also love rowdy rednecks too. Oh so yeah, be I rowdy. Mean, I'm just saying, be aware of your surroundings. There's a tiny <laughs> kid, two two people from you, ease up on the f bombs and the finger thing. Maybe you know because they're gonna yeah. they're gonna look maybe at you just like, make a hey, sign that says, "Will you play this?" Yeah, more middle fingers. Signs are still cool. Signs that's are still so cool. funny. I, I I I meant to mention that to you the other day. But, if you got a good uh, sign, you so might there even you go get now. It. I'm, and if you no, got a good sign on the front row, I might even come get it towards the last song, get it signed for you. you so, never know. but anyway, so yeah, that's it. That's well, they're, they're good just to know. To play more good to know. Fingers, so. so that's kind of funny. But uh, so uh, we mentioned March Madness. Yeah. Um, I'd be curious to know who our fans are fans of. Like, yep. let us know. I mean, and what's fun about doing that? We did that once before. Hey, send us in who you're rooting for. Blah blah blah. Whatever. Um, is you you know the to me the most fun part about March Madness is you see no name teams beat you know blue, blue bloods yeah. or and so um, you know like for example Arkansas plays in their first round game Vermont mm-hmm. well you would never think that in a major sport Vermont would compete mm-hmm. with Arkansas but they're gonna I'm sure they're gonna give us a great game may beat us I don't know it, but, yeah but, it but there'll be fans of Vermont, Vermont. oh and, yeah. Like last year, we played Colgate. I don't even know where Colgate is. Right. Mm. You know, but it'd be kind of mm-hmm. fun to see. And and so we're a four seed in the West, and we're playing in Buffalo. I'm not yep. sure how in Buffalo, that New makes York. any sense. But um, well, it's west of New York City, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but and you guys are a six seed, and you said y'all were in the. We're we're actually in the same bracket with you guys. Remember, we we thought this is how it's going to go down. If we do play <laughs> each other, we could possibly play each other in Sweet Sixteen. No, Elite Eight. No. 
Sweet 16, Sweet 16. Yeah, we could play each other in Sweet 16 because we're a 6C. We I got, hope that don't happen. Um, well, of course, they put us in the same bracket. <laughs> I mean, so, really? no way we could both win, you know, or, or meet up. In both the, get in the final SEC four. SEC teams, you know, yeah. Um, so, we got Rutgers or North Dakota, whoever wins this game, that's actually going to happen tonight, uh, the 11 seed. In our bracket, we got Duke and Gonzaga up top, which we've talked about. We beat Gonzaga. I think I like we our – Duke and – they're a two. They're two. In the, oh, good lord! Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and Y'all beat Gonzaga, yeah. Yeah, and the three seats, Texas Tech. Oh, we had to play them last year. <clears throat> UConn five, Boise State, Michigan State. I mean, our bracket's We're the not, four. And you know, Michigan State's one of those teams. I, if I have to pick between somebody, I'll lock, half the time I'll, I'll if I know that's a win, I'll lock them in because Izzo's gonna have them playing. Oh yeah, he's gonna have them whatever prepared. their team is. They're gonna be ready to play. So and then. Um, in the South region, Arizona is the number one seed. Um, Villanova, Houston, which we've beaten. Houston. UAB at 12 seed over there. The Blazers from Birmingham. Uh, Chattanooga, Illinois. That's one everybody thinks that Chattanooga can beat Illinois. I've seen a bunch of people saying that. Mm. And, and Michigan, 11 seed against a six seed Colorado State. I've heard is everybody's thinking that. Ohio State, who cares? Um, <laughs> Tennessee's the lone SEC team in that bracket. And they are three seed against Longwood. They should have got a two. Yeah, I heard that was they kind of feel like they got hosed. I'll on tell that. you who else got hosed, and and I'm certainly not a fan, but um I'm just being honest, it's Texas A and M. Got to the finals of the SEC tournament. Uh in order to do so they beat us. Tennessee. No, well they Vandy beat, beat us, yeah. Yeah, they beat um no, not not Tennessee. They beat Kentucky. Florida, which is Florida. a pretty good team. I don't know if they got in or not. I know they were on the bubble. Um, I don't see Florida. They may they may have missed it. Uh, we got six teams in. I was thinking it was y'all and uh, – okay. No, Florida did not get in. They were on the bubble, though. Good team. Mm -hmm. uh, they beat – A&M I'm talking about. They beat Auburn, which is a two-seed. Which is one of the scariest teams in the country. Yeah, they they beat they beat us in the in the tournament, which is a four seed. Um, that's two. Well, Auburn's a top five team. We're a top fifteen team. They beat them back to back. Then they played Tennessee close, and and they were five hundred in the regular season in the SEC, which was arguably the best conference in basketball this year. The Big Ten's getting all the love, but. They got like nine teams in or something. Yeah. Uh, or 10, maybe. A lot. Uh, and the next most was SEC was six, and I believe the Big 12 was six. But nonetheless, they got hosed. I mean, it yeah. doesn't matter to me whatsoever. But yeah, but – you know, And I don't hate on A&M. You know, we got a lot of cross love from Alabama there with Coach Stallings and Coach Bryant back in the day and stuff. And, um, yeah, that, that's, that is strange. To beat a now going in two seed and a four seed – the week before the tourney, and I mean, per, and beat us down. Yeah, you're telling me that, and really beat Auburn down the whole game. Yeah. Auburn made a run at the end, but and I don't know these teams, but you're telling me that they're they're better than Miami, a ten spot, ten seed. Well, Miami? the other one I was looking at, which I'm sure they were in at law or in uh, an automatic bid, but the the one that kind of brought it all to light to me was Texas A&M. Corpus Christi got in. And a, but Texas A and M did yeah, not get in. I'm sure. We, I, mean, I mean, I'm just like they may be studs, but who knows? Yeah. Anyway. Well, so yeah. So then in the East bracket, Baylor's at the number one spot, um, defending champion. Yep. North Carolina's an eight seed, so that might be a sleeper. Just knowing, how, you know, they got talent. It's a tough draw for a for a Marquette. second game for somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, Texas is a six seed. Purdue's a three seed. Murray State. Uh, seven seed. Kentucky is a two seed against St. Peter's. You tell me – I mean, we'll see. <clears throat> St. Peter's may win the whole thing. Then in the uh, Midwest bracket, Kansas. I've never seen Kansas at the top of a bracket, have we? No, never. <laughs> never. Good grief. Um, Iowa's in there. Providence. LSU's a six seed in that bracket. They got Iowa State as a first draw. Then they'll play the winner of Wisconsin and Colgate. USC and Miami, which they both could lose. <laughs> um, Auburn is the is the second seed in that bracket. And of course, they're playing Jacksonville State, which is a three hours north of Auburn. So um, couldn't couldn't make that to where two teams from Alabama could you know 
potentially go to the next uh be honest so do you want auburn going to the next game no not, not really <laughs> be honest with you but but Jack State, I do, and I don't want to have to play this tough a team. The Jack yeah, State's true. notables are lo- they lost to y'all by, or lost to us by six. They played us a close game, which man, we're so sporadic. I got a lot. I, I I'm really, um, I really think we're gonna have a good run in the tournament. I think we're I think we're streaky like that. I just hope we get hot right now. We didn't when Vandy Vandy put it on us in the SEC tournament. What didn't see that coming? That Scotty Pippen Jr. is good. He can play now. He they, I mean they almost I mean we watched it. Mm-hmm. They almost beat Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, which Kentucky eventually got beat by Tennessee in the semis, but yeah, Vandy's man, they're they're actually um, they're making some some progress. I, uh, Stack is doing doing a good job there. I think they were two or three games above five hundred this year, and uh, you know had some good wins and played some good games. Almost beat Kentucky three times, lost all three, but played them tough. Um, which is saying something, but uh, but yeah. Um, speaking of the SEC in basketball, I believe now four openings. Uh, Frank Martin at South Carolina got fired. Will Wade got fired at LSU because of the he finally uh, had to pay for all the uh, paying players is what it was. I mean, it, it was on tape. I'm not. I'm not gossiping. Um, Florida coach Mike White leaves for Georgia after Tom Crean gets fired. I think he saw the writing on the wall that he was about to be fired at Florida, right. at least from the outside looking in. It looked that way. Mm-hmm. And Because that, that seems like a lateral movement, really. <laughs> it seems like a down move for Even, basketball. Yeah, in basketball, yeah. Um, but I, I think they saw the writing on the wall, uh, or he did, you know, because he, he had missed the tournament. And hadn't really – he had kind of underperformed. Um, and then somebody else – I mentioned Tom Green out at Georgia. Point being, there's a lot of openings right now. So, it'll be – oh, Ben Hallen at Mississippi State. Mm, he's out. Who went to two or three straight Final Fours at UCLA. And Mississippi State's always been really good thought, at basketball. Yeah. yeah. So, um so anyway, moving forward should be interesting because the SEC and for those out there who hate when we do sports talk, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's March Madness. We got to. Yeah, we're gonna get back on the music. Um, but, um, and for me, I mean, I'm gonna mess no, you please. up. But I was gonna say, for me, <clears throat> there's not a better time than right now in sports when March Madness kicks no, off. NBA, baseball, NBA, for baseball, me starting. Yep, NBA. We got pro baseball starting again. Thankfully, yes, yes. Thanks for getting that done. All you millionaires and uh, trillionaire owners, get over yourselves. Although <laughs> we are heartbroken because Freddie Freeman did not re-sign with our Braves, but that's a whole different story. Yeah, but. and then I did just see we signed a. Um, um, is it Olson from the A's? We just locked eight years. We did sign in a guy that's – I think they're hoping he'll take Freddie's spot. A little younger. younger. That's what it looked like to me, I too. think Freddie wanted it – if I read it correctly, he's 32. Uh, he was drafted by the Braves. So, I, every time you see somebody go finish their career, then that they've had a great rapport with the fans yeah. and a town and a city and – I hate it. He was 32. I think he wanted a max six-year contract, which I'd have paid. If I'm the GM, I think he's worth it because <laughs> yeah. he's another chipper type guy. Yep. Uh, Even which if his last great few years, per- you got him for the locker room effect. If right. Else. I, that's my opinion. I, I'm I'm not running the show, obviously. And, and I think baseball nowadays, especially at his position, he plays first base, or he could just, uh, you know – uh, you know, bat. He could. Well, I guess we we don't have the DH in the National League. But my point is, his workload you could you could manage. Thirty eight's not that old, really, in no, baseball. Not now. With you know, if he's a pitcher or if he's a, a, a position player that that makes a a lot of difference on defense. I mean, he's a good first baseman. Don't get me wrong. He's a good defending first baseman, but that's not his thing. Yeah. You know, that's not why he's, he's Freddie Freeman. Um, but anyway, um, glad to have baseball back. And, but this, this time of year, exactly to your point, uh, it's, it's my, my favorite. Plus you got 
college football that's i mean right around mm-hmm. the corner i yep. mean you're going to be looking at spring games in next month right and so um yeah this is my favorite time of the year yeah and the weather weather starts summer's to turn. coming yeah, yeah. and uh, but but to to tie a bow on the the basketball talk the sec put a lot of emphasis the commissioner and the schools put a lot of emphasis probably eight years ago, ten years ago, maybe not quite that long. Uh, on basketball has got to get better in the SEC because we were we were behind. I mean, quite honestly, it was it was us some years, and most of the time just Kentucky. Right. Florida carried it a couple years. Uh, you know, Mississippi State had some good teams. Uh, you know, LSU had a good run here or there, but. It really kind of behind yeah. the Big Ten, the 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 Big Twelve, the ACC has owned it for years, and they hired all these these really good coaches, including like Ben Howland and Frank Martin went to a Final Four at South Carolina, um, and so I'm a, I'm assuming that there are going to be some splash hires, and it's going to get no easier but probably more difficult probably for so. us, oh yeah you know? yeah they're gonna they're gonna pull in some even more yeah because i mean it all goes together the better the league is the better the conference mm-hmm. is the better we players we mm-hmm. get the better coaches we can get the better national press we can get that you know everybody's upgrades their facilities every few years right. it's just y'all are building a new arena yeah actually yeah and coleman I'm, i've been to coleman a few times um i've I really don't even remember being there. Barely, I remember the yeah. game's kind of good enough cold beers. I don't remember the stand, the facilities right. that well. But I, I think it's a little older. It's dated. I think I'm it's a late seventies, early eighties yeah. model. So it's but probably time. they're built because I think Coleman holds sixteen, maybe yeah, fourteen, fifteen, yeah. sixteen, it's whatever. Not, not it's crazy. Yeah, but it's quite a bit. And Alabama's doing what a lot of people are doing now. They're kind of downsizing the number of of people. To make it more luxury, yeah, more. But that's happened in football. Yeah, we and, down, we went and, down at Bryant yeah. Denny, less people, but they added more boxes. But it, more... I've seen the renderings, man. It looks sweet. Yeah, I mean, it looked no pun intended. It looks badass. Yeah, it's like the crowd's right on top of the court, right? Yeah. Trying to create that atmosphere, like a Cameron Indoor Stadium yeah. Or, yeah. or whatever. I know Auburn did kind of the same mm-hmm. thing. Yep. I'll so be, I'm gonna anyway, go to a game next year, but uh, I don't know when that's start starting or being done or what season or whatever but um but that's just another example yeah. though what we're talking about of of, of the sec investing in basketball which and is you, what it takes yep I mean, and then that's how you get the good hires on the coaches and they can recruit the better yeah, talent new facilities and all that stuff yeah and so. then uh and then nba um it's in the stretch now where they're all fighting for playoff positions because that'll be happening soon so it's good um I hadn't, re- I hadn't watched as much in most years as I would. I know we got C.J. McCollum now playing for the Pelicans. Don't know if Zion's going to come back or not. Uh, LeBron and them is not working this year. Um, so, uh, I'll tell you one I saw that I got to give a congrats to is um, – uh, Carl Anthony Towns, a Kentucky guy. I was actually going to bring up the Timberwolves. Yeah, he dropped 60 last night as a center. First time since he's in 20-something a, years since Shaq. He's having an MVP type He had 32 season. points in the third quarter. Yeah. I, a lot of people think of them as a sleeper to win it. I mean, you know who else they have? Uh, Georgia Pat Bev. Got, yeah, and the, and, Arkansas the, boy. and the dunker from Georgia. Uh, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a stud a couple of years ago at Georgia. He's, still, he's good. He's, he's, He's a young force in the league too. Yeah, he's just athletic, man. He's all over the place. But so that'll be good. And then uh, NFL, you know, right now we're getting the with the trades and all that stuff. So even that's some action to get going on now. You know, I saw today you guys uh, picked up Mitchell Trubinsky to come play for two years with the Steelers for a for a deal on money. If he's decent, the, I mean, he's he sucked at Chicago. Well. He uh, who everybody has, to be honest with you. So, That's true. So, but I mean, at least, but for the money they're paying him, he could be a backup. And if it works, it works. If not, yeah. at least you got somebody because you're. It's gonna be hard to replace Ben. Just yeah, it's just when you look at what we lost. I mean, just the the experience alone. Yeah. In, in the huddle. Yeah. And uh, I mean, maybe he'll surprise me and play well. I knowing the Steelers, if that's what they they're going to do they I'm sure they're going to play him mm-hmm. for a couple of years until they feel like there's a no-brainer uh 
draft pick. Or I'm assuming, agent, yeah. uh, or free agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest news in the NFL, somebody's coming back. Did you oh see? yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The goat at at fifty. I mean. I mean, it, that didn't take long. No, and what he said, he had unfinished business. What? What could you? What could you possibly have left? Yeah. To do? Okay, Nick Saban. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, he just got home and thought about. Oh, it, no, like he, you got home, the kids was loud. That's crazy. exactly. He got home and it was like three fifteen at my house today. <laughs> yeah, he's it's, like it's exactly. You know, what honey, happened. I think I, I think I, the shoulders feeling pretty good. You know, after a little rest, maybe I got one more. You know, it'll help pay for retirement. That's exactly, well, you know, that's what happened. <laughs> So I'm excited for it. Yeah, March Madness is here. Sports. Is it is rocking. fun for the league. I think. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not a fan, but it's fun for the league. Oh yeah. And the day yeah. before it came out, everybody's thinking, "Man, he might go here. He might go there." I'm like, Shh. "What? We take him. I mean, I take him for half oh, a season if you get him. Yeah. I take him for six games if he'd come play for yeah. us. And like you said, the experience, and that's uh, you know, if if you got if whoever he's around, if you got some young guys around him, it's only going to help that. Oh yeah, that, that part too. So, so yeah, well, you want to take a quick break? Uh, let's I need do it. Joe Boo needs a refill, and um, I like it. Then we'll come back. We'll talk a little. little music. Lay on the cup. I don't know if y'all yeah. can see. Pretty cool. It's me and my little nephew on my cup. Everybody's like, Jerry, you got a picture yourself on your cup too. I mean, good <laughs> lord, you take this a little too far. I'm like, it's my nephew. It's not all about me. Uh, but yeah, we'll come back. I got some Q and A. We let's can chit chat about, and we can talk about some more music stuff and. Uh, and yeah, we'll be right back here shortly. Y'all remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast anywhere you interact with us on social media. I'm JR the Handler, Justin Cole Moore. Go to justinmoremusic.com and you can find all the info for any of our shows coming up, uh, merchandise, new stuff we've got out, um, any kind of events and stuff we've got going on. You can get tickets on there, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and also remember to rate, like, subscribe on anywhere you listen to this podcast. If you watch it on YouTube, click all the buttons that you can on there Hit as the well, please. the notification bell. Yeah, notification bell. And leave us a review anywhere you can, the stars, as many as you can. We appreciate it. All that stuff works. Again, for the thousandth time, we don't know how, but Cody says we need to make sure to mention that every time. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll be right back here in just a minute on the Justin Moore Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic benton arkansas Uh, again that's 119 west south street in benton arkansas and if you're not local we ship everywhere so uh you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer all that my wife kate has to offer i should say facebook you can find us at shop this little piggy ar and instagram you can find us at shop this little piggy ar but check us out it's called this little piggy and uh See what we got to offer. Shop this little piggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore podcast. Visit easyliquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail whiskey and join the blue collar swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now, pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great. Inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including 
brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Um, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, in all seriousness, um, welcome back to, to the Justin Moore Podcast. Hopefully you guys are enjoying today. A little more laid back today. Yeah. That's kind of uh, dreary here, yeah. I guess. It's kind of the calm before gray. the storm, too. Kind we of just got off the, the road. Storm. We got a big show coming up in a few days. You kind of touched on the fact that we're – a little bit our it's weird when you take a big break which we have meaning we've played now five six shows in what five months i mean a long time you have to kind of get your body suited and i know it sounds like malarkey but there is a different shape that your body has to get in to be on the road i don't i really don't know how to i I know we're not going to war or anything like that and i'm not i'm not insinuating that we. it's like sea legs it's like but you know it almost takes you a a couple of days to recover yeah uh, when you get back home and and so we're in recovery mode now so we're just kind of calm and our sleep kind of got out of whack (laughs) because of the long drive and and time changed on us Uh, yep Yep. Not only uh, did we go back an hour, we were in mountain time, but the clock sprung forward. Yep, and then so we're all out of out of savings. whack. And it's uh, and so. it and I tell you, I love Arizona. It's pretty. It's neat to be places like that. But man, it is dry. Woo. <laughs> Us Southern boys like that moisture. We like our humidity. And buddy, it yeah. is dry out there. My lips and nose are. I mean. They still and ain't back in shape. Bloody yet. boogers. Yeah. I know. I know you ain't, you ain't like trying got, to hear that, but my like, goodness, I feel like I, I got just, scales on my lips. And I, yeah, I've I feel used, like a fish. Yeah, I've used so I much chapstick like fish. and drank more water than I ever have. I took it, it. It's it's. I mean, you know this because you brought some to me or gave some to me. But I mean, there ain't a whole lot of places where I carry chapstick on stage with me in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, right. But Arizona's one of them. That's right. I can, promise you oh but yeah it was it was pretty out there it was cool like i mentioned earlier um our old buddy heath sanders and his full band were on the show with us and our new buddy stephen paul uh from west monroe louisiana via nashville now uh was on both shows with us and it was fun we got to cut up with those guys um and their teams everybody was good we got to work with brad denise garrett from police productions longtime friend promoter friends of ours so it was good to do a run with them um yeah i got to cut up with our band a little bit uh, you know unfortunately our uh, newest uh addition um stefan uh lost his grandmother uh, while we were on the road and that's that's a tough thing in this business when you you can't be home for stuff um and she lives in canada quebec city where he's from originally so he's going to get up there after the straight show but uh yeah got that news uh so i want to say our prayers to um, his family and him, um, you know, I, uh, I think she had been going through some stuff for a while, so she's no more pain. She's in a better place kind of deal, but it's never easy. It's tough. So you uh, and I have both been through it. I mean, I've, I've been through it recently. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't matter how bad off physically, um, you know, your, your grandparents are, you're never ready. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it I mean, it, it you say all the right things, and you, but you never stop thinking about. Oh, them. every day. You never stop picking up your phone to call. Yeah. Your grandpa or your grandma, and you go, mm-hmm. oh, I can't. You yeah. Know, it, it's tough. So, yeah. Yeah. Thoughts and, and prayers. And for the whole family. family, you know, everybody, you know. So, say that for them. But it was good. We we um we had a good time out there. Like I said, cutting up with them, and then a long ride home. 
And um, I know we talk about, we have before, we, we're going to try to get better rhythm of this kind of stuff, but giving you a video pick or a what to watch oh and what God. to I'm listen to. I'm glad you're bringing this up yeah. because – I, I'm chomping at the bit, right? I don't even want to watch uh, the games tonight. <laughs> you, really you know what I want to watch. I know, so, but I want to say uh, uh, the music stuff, my picks for music lately, um, I'd say Joe Nichols got a new record. I mentioned Muscadine and Bloodline a few weeks ago. Joe Nichols has a new record out that's that's pure Joe Nichols. It's great. We were just listening to a Larry Fleet record before we went on air, and um, if you hadn't ever heard of Larry Fleet, go listen to everything he's got because he's great. And I want to say a congrats to our buddy, uh, the big J.D., John Daly. The, the Arkansas legend uh, for, oh, yeah. his, for his release of his new album, get him on. Whiskey and Water with Willie Nelson. So, uh, I mean. Is it just a song? I think it says album. So, oh. I don't know if it's a – I need to go download. I hadn't got okay, it yet. Okay, so we, uh, I'm going to work on getting uh, – we'll be off next week, just so you know, because I'll be skiing with um, uh, my family. We're, the kids are on spring break. Um, so we'll be skiing. Yes, I know we just went skiing. We go a couple times a year, so lay off me. Um, I'm oh, kidding. John Daly artist. I found. I'm it. kidding, but uh, maybe for the following week or or so, I, I'll I'll work on getting JD on. I, I know I've, I've talked to him about it before, but that would be fun. Or we could get Joe Klein on. Ooh, that'd be fun. Um, because obviously we're in basketball. The peak of, of basketball season, but and I'm a lot sure of we'll, good options. And I'm sure we'll bring Marty back on at some point because he's always fun this time of the year. Uh, well, any time of the year. But, yeah, it's a whole record. It's uh, 13 songs I just downloaded. I, I meant to get it the other day, but I'm going back through my notes of what I needed to get, and now I do have it. Um, and speaking of that, you know, I talked to uh, Craig Campbell a couple of days ago, and he wants to come on in a couple of weeks and talk about some new music and stuff. Awesome. So one of our faves there. So got, got him going to come on. Um Guy, I've been a fan from afar, and I hadn't even got to meet him yet, but uh, Shelby Lee Lowe, talked to him the other day, young artist on the rise, want to get him on, chop it up at some point. Um, and then we talked about this, getting Bryce Mitchell on at some point. Yeah, he just won his last fight, big fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's lost. If he's lost, he's lost one time, but he's a real deal, man. I think he's got a chance to – I mean, I don't want to jinx him, but, I mean, if he keeps doing what he's been doing for the last – few years he's got a chance to maybe compete for a title yeah you know that world a lot better than i do uh, somewhat but. i've kind of drifted you know it comes and goes and i've kept up with him a little bit yeah. because he's he lives in little rock conway or mm -hmm. from right around here yeah and, um, I, and i love this quote he put on there too i ain't gonna go through the whole thing but he said when the war comes to arkansas i'm gonna dig my boots in the ground and die for everything i love well, yeah he's i don't get you fired total up. arkansas man yeah. waves the flag for us and uh, doing big things, so that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it, and uh, we'll go through a few right here real quick while we're just uh, chit-chatting. I've got a um, – well, some of these I'm going to read all of them and some I'm going to bounce around. I uh, had a ton of people – I just put a, a big blanket on that. had a ton of people agree with us about the ACM show, so we'll leave that at that. Thank you all for everybody who uh, did what they do and – Things happen like that. I got a lot of kind words for for that, so thank you guys and gals yep. for 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 that, and appreciate Whiskey Riff for for picking that up and writing a good story about it. Um, doesn't go unnoticed. So. Yep, yep, yep. It was cool. It was good. Um, good convo back and forth with people about that. Um, and maybe hey, you know, maybe we plant a seed and someday it gets where it's, you never know. You know, because. Um, yeah, made sense to me. Well, hey, being quiet about it doesn't help. So. No, no, and it's just downhill. So we got to get, make it, get it country again. Hey, uh, Joanna um, had mentioned that I had mentioned some old stuff I had, and she said she's a big fan of the show, and she would love to let her know about some of that stuff she get. And Joanna, I'm gonna hook you up with that. I'm gonna shoot you something on here and get your info, and I'm gonna send you something <laughs> cool um, from some of that old stuff we got. Um, let's see here. Well, that's a little explicit. He he got he was really excited about what we said about the award show. <laughs> um, oh, the TV show uh, Fandango we mentioned the other week. We got an episode of that in. Um, oh yeah, Bill yeah, Anderson, yeah, 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 country yeah. music. Yeah, it is a trip. I'm just gonna say that. I'm telling you right now, I would love it if it were like 80s through or even 70s through like oh or 2010 yeah or something like yeah. that yeah man that would be awesome. because this one was a little i mean this show was filmed in like early 80s a little above our paper yeah so i mean i, I mean I'm, we get a few here and there but i'm gonna you know 
these people know about the, the 50s like I know about the 70s. Right. You know, it's like, woo. So that was cool. Uh, the Whispering Bill, I mean, just hamming it up. It was awesome. He's a trip. Uh, I mean, he is so in his element doing that. Oh, yeah. It just what, what'd knowing you, him. And, what'd you call that kind of uh, sweater he had on? Argyle. <laughs> like a golf type sweater. Uh, with suit and boots. Yeah. And, it was great awesome. pay. I'm going through my phone here because that's what I've been doing is trying to take screenshots of some of this stuff because since I haven't been home to write these things down. Got a picture here of Eddie drinking water, our infamous bus driver who only drinks coffee. I uh, actually saw him drink a bottle of water, so I've got pictures of that. Uh, pictures of me watching Hank Jr. videos at 3.39 a.m. Uh, <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> uh, Shocker. Yeah, yeah. we... Um, all these we watched some other really good TV while you're looking up stuff. The stuff that I, over the years we've suggested watch this, don't watch that. Right. Well, I had been told by actually one of my co-hosts on the radio show um, that he started watching a show called Winning Time, which is the story of the rise of the Lakers once Jerry Buss became the owner. It's when they drafted Magic Johnson. And, uh, um, the only frustrating thing is is it, it, that you, you got to wait. It's not like Netflix where you can watch the whole thing, binge watch the whole thing. You got to wait weekly. And I forget when we get to the it's end, miserable. we're not going to just get to go watch the next one. And I'm Shame on – is that HBO Max? Yeah, HBO Max. Well, shame on you, HBO yeah. Max. I don't know what advantage they gain by not putting it all out there at one time, but come on, yeah, you got get, get with the times. Yeah, they're I mean, probably you go to nine out of ten other uh, apps, and you can watch at your own leisure. I'm sure they'll stick you for another additional add-on package where you yeah. can do that for another so ten that, bucks a month. Yeah, yeah you're probably sure. right. So that's incredibly frustrating. Uh, maybe some of you guys like that. I, I don't. If you know, we're on a bus for an entire day, and you got your heart set on watching something. It's frustrating, but nonetheless, I'm totally hooked on the show. It's called Winning Time. It's, I would say the, uh, it's probably really close to to true it feels that way i mean it feels believable but except for the how intense jerry west yeah was there, his there language. are probably some uh exaggerations oh, yeah. i'm sure oh yeah uh, but but yeah jerry west jr and i were <laughs> were joking watching it that he cannot be happy with the portrayal of, <laughs> of him on the i mean he is an absolute madman so far we're only two episodes in uh magic super likable which yep. he is in real life yep. uh i think jerry buss is incredibly it's likeable. hilarious too hilarious played by john c Riley, and he looks the like cast is great he looks exactly like yeah. him but he's a trip he's a character Most, and, I, mean, and I didn't know much about jerry buss before this but it makes me want to go research him yeah but it, i'm telling you if i don't even think you have to like basketball or sports to and I know this has been heavy sports day today, but um, while you were looking that up, I yeah, just thought I'd, yeah, I'd bring no, no, this no. up. But I don't. I think you would enjoy it. Like the way I rate this is, would my wife enjoy this? Even though she don't know anything about the NBA, and I think she would. Right. It's just really, really entertaining and really well done. And I even I thought it was going to be distracting. How like sometimes the characters will talk directly to the camera and i thought that's going to be distracting i almost like like it, it. yep yep and, and i don't typically like those types of things so i don't know if you want to add anything else to no to winning I, time or... I, I i i'm with you i think even if you're like a cultural person or just a era like that that late 70s early 80s era and showtime it, just showtime man and just uh forum. he bought the forum <clears throat> the lakers and the kings the nhl team for $67 million. Yeah. Which is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But you got that building in L.A. Yeah. You got the Lakers. That building now is, I mean. And you get, yeah, what is it? A billion, billion dollars. A billion dollars. Yeah. And the Kings. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, for people We haven't gotten there in the show yet, but I, I looked it up. I'll tell you another character in there is Michael Chiklis playing Red Auerbach. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he does yeah, a yeah. good job. He, he does. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's so it, it kind of starts with the, the Lakers were really good, but they had lost. Correct me if I'm wrong, but six straight to the Celtics. Yep. And that would have been uh, 60s to the uh, uh, early. Who would have 70s. been the big time player, Boston? Uh, oh, that would have been um, Parrish and McC- no, 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 no. That'd been four. That'd been uh, who were their studs? Then? Wilt. No. Uh-uh. Wasn't he, Wilt there? He played for Lakers. He oh, was okay. on some of those teams. Oh, Bill Russell. Bill Russell was Bill the Russell. guy. Bill That's Russell was, was the guy. But yeah, yeah, that's who it was. There was some, there was some <laughs> other, obviously, other fantastic Yeah, it was Bill Russell, who team. I'm thinking Maybe of. Maybe Havlicek. But they had lost, I believe, like six straight mm-hmm. uh, finals now, not not in the playoffs. They had gone to the finals when Jerry West was a player and uh, in the mid to late 60s. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> – uh, and then they won one because West in won 72, one. Yeah. Uh, which was after Bus. I, no, no. Before. Before oh, Bus, yeah. yes. They had won one. But anyway, it kind of picks up after that. They had, they had had a lot of success, but not nearly as much as they thought they should be having. And Jerry Bus kind of takes it to a whole different level on yeah. a lot of fronts. And so I would encourage anybody to check that out. And then <laughs> – <laughs> we've new- talked about some stuff on here that we go that's just so ridiculous like that show or that movie or you know i remember the whatever the one we watched on the bus before was ridiculous for a whole different reason um, um i forget what it was called rec, rec- uh, rectify rectify yeah, I'd be curious to know if anybody ever went and watched any of that a few people were like were they like what in the world yeah. like kind of like us yeah, yeah. Um. But we, Jr. had, Jr. had mentioned to me that he had watched this, an episode or two or three of of this show, and who was in it. And I'm like, yeah, let's check it out. And quite honestly, I wasn't thrilled about the, I guess premise the over, the yeah, yeah, maybe the premise of the show. I'm like, how are they gonna make this funny? Yeah, you know, because it's comedy. Oh, did they make it funny? But involving religion. I mean, so it's called the Righteous Gemstone. <laughs> I think, right? Yeah, the Righteous it? Gemstone. And if anybody watched um, Eastbound and Down, Eastbound and Down, the Kenny Powers character, I forget the guy's actual Danny name. McBride. Danny McBride, yeah. He's hysterical. He's a great comedic actor. and um, He just looks ridiculous. Yeah, Will Ferrell was in that show, Eastbound yeah. and Down. I mean, it was... It was a. It followed a baseball player, kind of a washed up baseball player playing semi pro or whatever. Yeah, and he's just he an awful person, terrible person. But it just really, really funny and clever, well written, yeah. and all that. And there was what two seasons three. of that? Three. It was great. We loved it. We yep. watched it on binge watched it on the on the bus. And and you said, I'm telling you, he's Kenny Powers in this. Yeah, being an evangelist. And so he's a basically a televangelist, like the big, the Joel Olstein type, the, the yeah, uh, whomever else, Jimmy Swagger, Billy Graham, yeah, the Jimmy homie, Swagger, just, Billy just Graham, just as big those, as those guys, it, yeah, it, it, and generational, and it, it's awful. I mean, you can speak to this better than me because they're it, all crooks, but they're all crooks. It's it's terrible. Uh, they're taking complete advantage of people, and and look, I'm a Christian. Um, but I understand the ridiculous nature yeah. of some of these types of situations yeah. that these guys find themselves in, or, or the, put put themselves yeah, in, with not the private find jets in. and the helicopters oh, yeah, and the security it, and the just. And so Jr. and I are just hysterically laughing watching this, um, and he goes, "Is it bad that we're laughing at this?" I said, "And the here's my justification: it's not because." This show is pointing out how ridiculous and awful, quite honestly, some of these things, you know, are. Yeah. And so, anyway, you got to go. I don't even care if you, you, you're religious or. Again, it's it's kind of like the the Lakers deal. It doesn't matter if you're a sports fan. It's highly entertaining. And I think you'd get a kick out of it. If, if you want to check out the righteous gemstones, I don't know if I articulated that. 
no. as well as you would have, Jr. No, but. you're you're spot on. It's ridiculous in all <laughs> the right ways. It's uh, you just got to take it for what it is. It's just comedy, and and they're making fun of themselves, and you know, and it's 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 showing how you know, like you said, doing all this stuff for the wrong reasons is. Uh, is awful and stuff, but it's just so over the top. Like I said one time, I said, "How big is this piece of property on?" Because the kid comes in on the dirt bike and rides for twelve minutes. Oh, yeah. and ain't him to the. That's back a of house the- he don't want to move into because he's he's embarrassed by it. Yeah. So it was like a, a great grandpa Roy yeah. or something. It's so over the top. It's John Goodman, and that's what John I- Goodman's great yeah. too. I mean, and, and Jennifer Nettles plays. The, yeah, that's right. The yeah. mom who had passed away, but they do a lot of. I'm, we're not going to spoil the show because if you hadn't seen, I want you to go watch it. We'll talk about it later. Matter of fact, we got to go. We got to go watch it right now. Right, we probably should. Uh, <laughs> probably knock out season two tonight. We, in all honesty, we lost uh, internet on the bus about 20 minutes from home at two, midnight last night or whatever. And uh, you can bet your bottom dollar we got home and got it fired up in the living room oh, before, yeah. we before we thought yeah. about going to bed. And then we said. Well, season two. I mean, we got to watch one of season two. Yeah, just just see fun. where it's going, and it is a, going in a weird direction. <laughs> yeah, so we're on episode one of season two. So uh, we could probably hide out in my office and watch season uh, at least one season two, episode two, before Kate knows anything. <laughs> Let's do it. You want right. to. Well, it's been a good week here on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Um, all right, let me get through a couple more of these here. I want to say uh, this is from our old buddy Mark Cooper out in, out in California. Uh, impromptu version of the weight on the podcast was one of uh, was off the charts. True display of what a freak talent JR truly is. Yvonne would be proud. Uh, I'll take Justin's guitar of a guest any day, although all your guests are great. Thanks for continuing to make Thursday the day of the week I look forward to. Coop from NorCal. Awesome. Yep. So, but that's the guy we met at our barbecue, Cooper's in Texas. Oh, no kidding. And we stayed in touch with oh, Yeah, wow. we, still, we still chit-chat every that's now awesome. and then. That's awesome. And um, uh, uh, Casey Pintar, I hadn't read your message yet. I see you hit me up there, and I know we got to work on getting your uh, getting your show lined up, and we'll hit you up when we get done with this. So what's up, uh, Casey Pintar? Um, yeah. Bunch of buddies hitting us up um, on different stuff. Good chit and chat with all our buddies on Soch. Uh Let's see. Let's go through some of these here on um, uh, on the YouTube. I'm, I forget to do this some weeks. On the YouTube comments that we had um, last week's podcast, uh, Jamie Higgins says, I love y'all's podcast. Watch every episode. I am Justin's number one fan. And JR, y'all are the bomb. Um, Thank you. Nick Bosch, oh, come south. Good Love this. the podcast and keep them coming. <laughs> We've got a special guest here now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, South Moore. Come here, South. What are you doing? What's up, bud? I want to go come over here. I want to go. Who's this? That's my nephew. That's Aiden. Come see. What are you doing? Or sit with Dad so you can talk here, to his mom. Here. Oh. This is the uh, youngest member of the Justin Moore podcast, T South, as I hey call him. Hi. Say what's up, y'all. What's up? You've been eating French fries and crispy chicken. You smell like it. You smell like fried food. <laughs> is that what you've been eating? Chicken and French fries. <laughs> <laughs> also quite. Hey, South, tell them what your favorite dinosaur is. Uh, T Rex. What is your favorite superhero? Uh, Flash. Who? No, what? Flash. Flash. I thought it was Hulk. Where did that come from? It was just uh, Spider Man. Last week we were watching the Marvel movies, and wasn't it uh, wasn't it uh, Captain America or mm. Thor? Mm. It's the Flash. Mm. Hey, talk. It's the Flash. Uh, Thor. Thor. Mm. I thought. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Got, which Which one of your yeah, sisters is the nicest movies. to you? Don't talk like a baby. Which sister is nicest to you? None. <laughs> Which, yes, they are. <laughs> Which one lets you sleep with her every night? None. That's a lie. <laughs> Don't be silly. Talk seriously. I'm actually, not, I'm actually lying. I know you're actually lying. No, I'm really serious. No, you're not. Come eat. Who's your favorite sister? I was just coming in here to say, come eat. Well, I can't come eat yet. But who's your favorite sister? Who's, I got an easy one for you. Who's nicer, mommy or daddy? <laughs> you better say, Dad, you're with him right now. Daddy. All right. He's, his go to usually is, I love both of y'all. Aww. I love both of y'all the same. Who's your favorite dad? 
I'm you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I saw you. I had fun with you outside earlier, South. He's got a new bike, and we got to ride his bicycle. And, man, you can get it on that bicycle, can't you? Hey, you know you? what color your bike is? Um. Dude, you're getting chicken all over my microphone. It's gross. What, what color is your bike? Uh, green. Oh, it's not. It's camouflage. South. When I when I came to town last ball. week, where did I, where did we go? Did what? Did you have practice last week? Oh yeah, you had. What do you What did you just start playing? South. Come on, we got the hey, t-ball. Yeah. So you, Jr. got to go to your t-ball practice. I got to go to t-ball. And who's your buddy on your team that plays first base? Um, South and Beckett. Beckett. That's your buddy. Shaw and Beckett. And Mr. Mill. Is Weston Brown on that team? On guard. Okay, get out of here. <laughs> All right, oh. ladies and gentlemen, there's the infamous Southmore's food. We got food downstairs. <clears throat> you going to come over here with me now? What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> we're just chit-chatting, answering some questions, and giving some shout-outs from people that listen to the podcast. South. What? You got a birthday coming up? Yes. When? Um, four days. No, it's not in four days. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. How many no. are you going to be this year, South? Um, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you're a goofball. All right, get out of here. Yeah, you're pretty destructive. You know it. Tell your mom to lose my number. Yeah. <laughs> Hulk smash. Love you, buddy. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> what? A, and, and usually. Well, there you, you go. Yeah, and usually you can't get him to shut up. No, he's kind of <laughs> acting goofy. He don't usually. Klein usually does that kind of like baby talk deal, but he don't. He usually will just talk. Yeah. He was acting like a little weirdo. That's funny. Uh, all right, so I'll get through some more of these on the YouTube real quick. One of my favorite episodes yet. Uh, number one, congrats to KM on the great decision in baptism. So proud of the Moore family for setting a Christian example. Number two, they can cancel guns. We're already listening through YouTube at least 20 times this week in honor of cancer culture. That's our old buddy Ryan Penrose there. Love it. Uh, Thank you. Jason Cook. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a wait a wait dosh, a, here I go again. I'm listening man. to old. I'm 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 going to old stuff. Well, there's where I messed up. So those are some old shout outs from season uh, from the uh, beginning of this season. So there you go. Make sure I get caught up on those too. Um, oh, Freddie Justin is definitely underrated in the industry. Should have won a lot of awards by now. Agreed. Oh, thank you. Um. Bill Wallace, this is what I tune in for. Tell it like it is, Justin. Uh, what a crap. What award shows turn into right now. Continue to preach, listening forever. Our old buddy L.A. Red Feather, uh, enjoying the podcast. Um, go Hogs. And basically just a bunch of that. Jason Claub Claubody. Oh, boy, I know I butchered that. Uh, Christy Wilkinson, uh, Darren Carter. He said, I, this is so cool. I had no idea Justin had a podcast found out about through CountryCast. Bravo. Wow. Um, Karen Warren uh, agrees. Oh, I can keep going on this forever. There's a bunch on here this week. Uh, we'll love to see Justin at Country to Country in the U.K. next year. And this year, this year was amazing. Uh, well, it's a lot of that stuff, and I'd love to give all these people a shout out. What's well, a lot this week? Um, Braxton Church, appreciate the shout out there. Monkeys, f Monkey Dog's favorite son. Boy, some names on here Francis Scott Hittrick, uh, the Stads, Renata Hudson, Dora Woody, longtime listener, Joanna. There you are again. Uh, Susan, always kind words. Appreciate that, Susan R. And Karen from uh, NYC. Appreciate y'all getting on there and uh, chiming in on the YouTube channel. Y'all do like them. Go on the YouTube channel and watch it. I mean, it, you know, or let it run in the background. You can listen to it that way, too. And if you do, hit the like, rate, subscribe. I'm going on here now, and I'm liking it. I'm going to – I'm already subscribed. I'm going to hit the bell just to make sure. Look at you. Yeah, look at there. I know how to do it now. So I can tell people how to do it. Um, I had some on here from Twitter world, uh, 
JRJM, listen to the podcast from November 2020. Justin said, once y'all get back out on the road, he vowed to start sightseeing again. Has he kept up with that? And what has he seen? <laughs> awesome podcast. A little bit. I mean, would you consider what I did the other day? What, we got a massage <laughs> half a mile from the venue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, that's better than you used to do. That's better than I well, used to do. And we so, I got, a- I, so I've been having some issues with my... I guess back shoulder, shoulder blade. blade, which is a weird thing to have an issue with, but like every couple of weeks it'll hit me and it'll it hurt really, really badly. Kind of under my shoulder blade. I don't, I don't know what, the, please don't tell me it means I've got a, a heart attack coming or something. I don't even text us that uh, or, <laughs> or social media is that I don't, I don't want to know if that's the case. But anyway, it'll come on and hurt for a week or whatever and, like, gives me trouble sleeping and Kate's rubbing icy hot on me in bed and that kind of yeah. stuff. And um, it was kind of giving me fits before we left. And you had mentioned there was going to be a masseuse at, at one of the venues. And I said, okay. So she was only supposed to be there for, like, I think three hours. Yeah. And, I was wanting to get like a two hour massage, <laughs> but I didn't want to monopolize her time. So I did 50 minutes or yeah. an hour or whatever. <clears throat> and I thought, man, she really worked on that area pretty good. Um, but I felt like it was just getting it started. You need like another needed, hour. Yeah. yeah. And so I went, I looked up a massage place and went and got another two hour massage. So I got a three hour massage. Now my back's still sore. Cause <laughs> That that sweet older uh, Asian lady at the place I went to, and I, I mean she 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 didn't take it easy on me <laughs> yeah. necessarily. I mean I'm talking elbows, knees. I mean it's just like digging in now. Um, it was good in a good yeah, way, yeah. but I mean there were times where she goes, "Is the, is the pressure too much?" I'm like, "It might be a little much. <laughs> well, it it yeah. might just be just a touch too much." Yeah. Uh, and it's so and I'm crazy. I'm like, man, she's such a, like, she probably weighs 90 pounds dripping wet if she's 65. <laughs> and I, how, she, how is she is so a strong? powerful being. Yeah, how mean, is she so strong? Yeah, how is she? Yeah, her hands are so much, I mean, she could crush me <laughs> so, with her hands. This lady is so powerful. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy to listen to you say that because I've been preaching this for years because <sighs> I've been getting them for a long time because when you're uh, the older you get and being athletes and getting banged mm. up, riding around buses and back in the day drinking and falling and fighting and all that crap. I mean, it just works for me. It helps. Man, and I sleep better. And I, I mean, get it now. It just. I, I, I will say I think I overdid it because I was, I was a little at the beginning of the show that night. That was the second night. I still kind of felt like jello, like my body kind of, I was still kind of, so maybe three hours on a show day might be mu- a little much. Yeah. Uh, That's might order to stick to like an hour. Yeah. But I mean, she spent 45 minutes on my shoulder blade. Right. You know, right. And, and knock on wood, it ain't hurt since. Right. Yeah. You just got to figure out your mixture. But, but yeah, it was, it was awesome. So I don't, I don't. I didn't sightsee, but I did get off the bus, which I typically don't. Right. Do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, we've only done a couple of shows this year already, and um, yeah, we really haven't had the opportunity yet. And we've been. And it's bu- been cold. Cold. Where we've been, yeah. And, I mean, because we were at. Um, you guys did go when we were at Sea World the first show. Y'all got it, but even I, yeah, then it was, it was freezing. Freezing. Freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. It, we, it, yeah. So I did do that yeah. day. We went and rode ride, took rides. Took the kids and did, yeah, yeah. But it was freezing. Yeah. And then so, uh, in Mississippi. Um, Y'all were getting ready to go on your trip, got there late. It was cold that day. Um, Freezing, yeah. cold. And then yeah. um, we got to Texas, it, it frozen in Texas, both shows. So we didn't do anything then. Yeah, we were going to ride around that property that day. And then the you next remember? day in Dallas, we had all these plans to go to Cooper's, and everything was closed because of the ice storm. So we didn't even leave the bus that day. I went. So it hadn't really been my fault. No, no. So we're going to, though. But we're yeah. going to get to some of these places. We're going to do some stuff. Um, we've talked about a few things. So looking forward to that. Thanks. I uh, don't know what it says about me, but. Um, I mean, and Jr. is kind of the same way. Like, I don't. Again, I don't know what it says about me, but like, you know, if if people let's say lay in bed for longer than you would expect that they should or think that they should, um, <clears throat> like on the bus or whatever, um, 
you, you think, oh, they're depressed or what? I mean, it's kind of like my happy place. Like, yeah. I love it. I, it right. and, and we started the, the day off talking about 315 and what that looks like at my household. Yeah. You just heard from South, who's out of office freaking rocker. <laughs> um, so part of me not going out and, and doing is because – I constantly go out and do, whether it be coaching or doing the radio show or whatever yeah. I have to do at home. School so stuff, a lot of t- family school stuff. stuff just- yeah. A lot of times when I am at home or on the road, rather like just laying there and quiet and dark and cold <laughs> and just reading on my phone or playing some stupid game on my phone. It's not because I'm like, I don't want to be around nobody or I'm depressed right. or whatever. It's just because I don't ever get that. Yeah. It's just, just all, It's just so awesome. Yep. It's so relaxing. Yep. I'm, and I it's kinda, like getting a massage. Yeah. I mean, it's just relaxing. It's rela- and I kind of feel the same way, and I don't have near Most the, of the time at home, if I want that, I got to go take a dump. Right. Hide I mean, bathroom. that's it. Hide I the mean, bathroom. The, that's it. Yeah. Me and hour. Kate jo- joke that she's going to hate this when she hears this, but we joke. She, I don't even think she takes dumps, but, um, but it, she, I'm like... All right, now you've been in the bathroom for forty-five minutes. <laughs> She's Come on now. I know, I know for a fact <laughs> yeah. you're on your phone reading something. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. You're hiding in there too. Yeah. Got I, a, I got a, I got a, I got a pillow. <laughs> I got a air quote. Use the bathroom too now. <laughs> Come right. on. Come on now. Uh, so I I guarantee you, if you guys are honest with us out there, there are so many parents out there who do the same stuff. Be honest with us. Yeah, you, the bathroom is your sacred zone. Oh yeah, get, get there yeah it, whether you got to take a crap or not, you, yeah, you can just go. Hide and I don't out. even, I don't even have the kids and stuff to keep me. I, that's just the office. You're from, just trying to get away from reason. Well, that's just my office in the morning. That's like you said, it's my it's comfort. You know, fan running. It's just where you get to where I get the emails checked first thing off. Then I figure out what priority I would do. But on the road, I'm in the same spot, and I don't have near the blender pressure cooker you do at home. Um, but I just at home, I just, I get up and I just do stuff. I just stay busy most days at home. Um, because you know, I just got, I feel like the list never ends. I get two things done. There's three more things get added on the bottom of my list around home or work stuff I need to do. So I'm usually up and pretty active at home. And a lot of times I want to get up and take Lola for a walk or go to the gym before I get my day started. So I get up for me early because on the road i do not i play dead to the absolute last second i gotta go do oh, something yeah. I, mean, I know i ain't gotta worry about that with you yeah no and, and and my thing is i um you know and i'm saying that and i i went from a tour manager that got up at about i don't know 4 30 that's what i was gonna say joey was the opposite joey would get somewhere to, and couldn't wait to get up and go inside and i'm like to, it's 12 15 i got to get up it's fine <laughs> i gotta go I, i'm te- i text jeff and nate in the morning everything good <laughs> okay good <Yeah>. awesome <laughs> you know? yeah yeah holler if so you need you, me <laughs> yeah yeah hey see y'all at showtime yeah. see y'all backstage <laughs> yeah. i'll be in shortly to get tickets per diems handled <laughs> let me know if you need some but that's just the way i've got my stuff scheduled because i'm the late i take the late shift and i always did but if i need to i get up but i if i don't i'm not gonna normally just get up to go because i'm like you it's dark it's quiet Generator oh running. yeah, the generator. Oh, I can so catch up play some games i ran so good and, we, and look watch sports center look, we had because at home, I don't get to control the TV much either. If Sharice goes to work, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to the studio. And I run back inside and uh, try we're to play gonna a nerd out, game. And we'll nerd out for a minute here. This is all, again, this podcast is about honesty and who we are as people. I'm going to give you some – I'm going to pull the curtain back even more. And we've done a, a fair amount of that, I would say, uh, over the last couple of years or whatever it's been. But – um, we'll nerd out on some games on our phone now. Mm-hmm. The 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 newest one is called Retro Bowl. It's free, which is key. You can play it with or without service or Wi-Fi. So it's you could use it on a plane or if you don't have cell service. Um, it's a football game. It it reminds me Tecmo of the Bowl. Tech, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a playoff Tecmo Bowl. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's easy awesome. and it's fast. It, it is, but it's also difficult enough to keep you interested and pissed off. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Because once you get better at it, 
you jump levels. The difficulty, and, it fluctuates with how good and, you're doing. And our wives just don't understand the pressure that's on us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't know if you want to kind of speak to it. But. I mean, being one, I mean, in Tecmo Bowl, you were this guy or that guy. and this. That, but in this game, you're everything. I got to be the GM. I'm the head coach, offensive coordinator, which – don't the play the playbook is garbage. I don't I, know. I, I never get more than a one star uh, OC Coach, or no, DC. Never, no, never, never. And we ain't stopped nobody since the late eighties. Yeah, I, if I mean, I, even ain't if stopped I'm, anybody. If I'm a four star on defense, I still not gonna stop a half star on offense. It's no, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So, I mean, and then I'm the, I'm yeah, the I mean, quarterback, the, damn, the kicker, the snapper. Uh, the G, I mean, it's just too. I've got to run running the, back. Yeah, I've got to. I've got to make sure the facilities are up to par. The training facilities, the stadium. I mean, what am I not in charge? Free agency. Coaching hires. I mean, like, this is a lot on a one person to deal with. Yeah, and I have a real job, too. Yeah, on top of that, I've got uh, – people are waiting on me to make decisions. Yeah, yeah, you got to do <laughs> – On gotta, top of this. You got to do uh, security meetings, get tickets <laughs> yeah, to Will Call. All kinds of stuff. Uh, make sure I'm coherent Go and, be ready and to alive. Run. Yeah. And on top of it, you have all these other responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure there are people – the people that know us are laughing their ass off yeah. right now, and the other people out here – Watching or listening, going, what in the hell are yeah, they talking and, and about? And for me, I mean, you're, you, I'm, I'm a bigger Willie Nelson fan than you are. So we're out in Arizona; it's legal out there. So you know, I might have had a few gummy bears. That's going to slow down my train of thought. I mean, make, make it a whole, whole different world there, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a tough weekend on the road and on the field. I haven't know, won a championship in about seven seasons, and I'm, pro I'm in fear of losing my job. Yeah. And I met my dream team, the Steelers. Yeah, yeah, that's me. And I, and the fans go down. My my running back will not stop fumbling the ball. <laughs> I may have to trade you. I know. I'm like, I won a championship. Nasib. His name is Nasib. That's his last name. You might be on the chopping block, son, because <laughs> be I may be if you ain't. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the fans, they just they, they just expect way too much out of you. Win them a championship two years later, you're, you know. You're, you're a bum. You're a bum. You're still in the playoffs. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> injuries. I mean, they don't take anything of that in consideration. Yeah, but Retro Bowl, if there's any yeah. uh, nerdy sports in particular, football fans out there, check it out. It's, yeah. Um, um, but, but that's how ridiculous we are. We have – so you get a little slap happy, I would say, on the road. Uh, and we have these conversations as if we were the coach, GM, quarterback, as, as if this were a real job. Yeah. Like, take we, it very but I mean, we, but we don't come out of character. No, like we no. we finish the conversation and we're like, man, well, good luck to you guys next yeah, week, yeah. and then we part ways yeah. and we, yeah, it's, it's so ridiculous, you know. Anyway, it, that pulling the curtain back, a and I'm still playing, and I mean, this you won't get it real. I'm still playing Boom Beach. How long have I been playing Boom Beach? Eight years. Can I look that up again? Eight years. If you oh can find gosh. that review off why how when I got you on it, it's the most. So what the basically best of what all basically time. happens is. JR will. This happened. You don't want none of this, Dewey. What, five years ago, four years I ago? It's been a whatever. while. And you go, I go, what do you play? He was always playing a. Because uh, you game. hold your phone sideways. Yeah. And he's and like, I'm why like, you always got your phone sideways? I said, what are you playing? Because at the time, he was playing like racing games to collect coins and things like that. Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, stuff something. like that. I go, what are you playing? <laughs> I'm like, I don't he's know. Like, you, you, want don't, you don't want none of this. And I'm like, is it why is it expensive he goes no it's like the cheapest app there is it's free <laughs> it's free i go but yeah but you probably it's probably hard and you're like no nah, it's pretty easy <laughs> yes. and so long story short um and everybody hates me when i turn him on to a new game too by the mainly way mainly my wife hates yeah, and management and my kids else. yeah and so yeah I, I haven't checked an email in months <laughs> Um, by the way, I mean, and if you, the season, what do they expect? Well, I mean, I got the draft coming up. What am I supposed to just rely on the, the, the knuckleheads in the front office? Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. They try to get you free agents that have got the worst, worst, uh, attitude on bang earth. For, yeah. And bang for your buck. At a I one mean, star. Like, hey, I'm, I'm not like, paying you 30 million this year, man. You're a three star DB. What, I mean, and you got a terrible attitude. Yeah. And your attitude stinks. Um, people are going, what the hell are they talking about? But I'm not wasting coaching coins on getting your attitude up. That's on you. <laughs> yeah. So this happened a few years ago. There's just, uh, uh, I don't know. How would you describe Boom Beach? There's a game called Boom Beach. It's like a tactical. Yeah. It reminds you like civilization type thing, conquer stuff. You Look, the clouds right there. I could just re-download it. 
Uh, Don't do it. <laughs> but anyway, I got hooked on it. We both got hooked on it. We were on teams together, we, the whole thing. Task whatever. force. Task force together, yeah. <laughs> but um, – There was a uh, review. There was a, there was a review. So that, Justin that will do that. He'll hear – if I say something and I'm like, oh, I don't really know, he'll go – he's over there Googling it. Yeah. So he went and found some reviews on it, and he starts laughing. And I don't know if we can find it. But that review – If I can find this. It's, it's the greatest it's review. It's like his wife left him. Yeah. The, but it was worth it because it was the greatest time of his yeah. life. Yeah, gave him and, the greatest – there's no joy else besides <laughs> his game he could possibly need. Um, He's actually arranged the uh, things in his front yard and stuff to, uh, you know, fend off invaders. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's it's over the top. But anyway, so uh, probably three weeks ago, uh, Jr. goes. I hesitate to even tell you this. I do it. Uh, <laughs> but I was getting so much joy out of it. I was like, he'll he's love like, this. I got to tell you this. And so he goes, I started playing this new football game. And so fast forward to now, I'm I'm, I'm like – Kate's like, I'm, that's I'm, what he's been doing? I'm a Hall of Fame coach at this point. Yes, Kate's like, that's what he's been doing? I find him hiding in the corner, squatting down with the phone sideways. I'm like, what are you yeah. doing? So, retro bowl. I'm trying – That's a lot. What, what am I not doing here? I mean, I'm the wide receiver. I got to – I mean, it's, it's just, it's just yeah, too much for um, one person. And I and, and Boom Beach, I play. I don't play it as much as I used to. I mean, I check in every day though, make sure I get my. You know, I don't want nobody to think I'm slacking. You know, but I've got it down to just those. Um, I've had you know, some little Tetrisy games and things like that. But I've got another like uh, popping. What what does uh, uh, Therese call it? Oh, uh, Candy Crush. Yeah, but popping uh, popping bubbles. Yeah, know? something. Yeah, because it was bu uh, it was a different one. Bubble something. I've got a game that yeah. that's kind of like that. She I got off. She had to get herself off. She was at like level three thousand and trying spending hours trying to beat something. I ain't done it since I've been uh, retro bowl. Since I've been a coach <laughs> I mean, in, a in the NFL. I, I mean, for, for your dream, for my <laughs> Steelers. I haven't. So, but anyway, if you if we'll we'll try to find this review and uh, post it or read it on the next episode if, if we can find it. But uh, <clears throat> I know we we talked about music, and getting to see some of our people out there, and I, I I had a few things that I thought were pretty interesting on the, this week in country music um, that I wanted to uh, hit on right here. Um, since we don't have a guest on here, I'm going to think about somebody for their birthday, um, 1927, uh, and. Martinville, Tennessee, uh, Carl Smith was born, better known as Mr. Country. Smith was the husband of June Carter uh, and the father of Carlene Carter. He was uh, he was one of country's most successful male artists during the 50s with 30 top 10 hits, including 21 in a row. Smith died January 16, 2010. Uh, 1966, um, at this year's Grammy Awards at Chicago, L.A., and Nashville, and New York, Roger Miller won six awards, five of them related to his hit King of the Road. The best new country and western, western artist went to the Statler Brothers. So that was when they got kicked off. 1968, the Birds uh, record label, Columbia Records, arranged them for play in Nashville, and they got booed. That was a big uh, big stink there in 68. In 70, Merle Haggard was uh, top of the country charts with Fight Inside of Me. It was the release. Uh, released You're in walking on the fighting side of me. So good. Uh, it was released December of 69 and the first single and track off the album, The Fight Inside of Me. The song became one of the most famous of his career. Great tune. Um... In 1982, Alabama was on top of the charts with Mountain Music, their award-winning third studio album. A crossover success, it ranked well in the album both country and pop charts and launched singles that were successful in several markets. This was Alabama's most successful non-compilation album. Uh, what a great... Uh, in 05, Miranda, our old buddy Miranda Lambert, released her debut studio album, Kerosene, which debuted at number one. Uh, as well as 18 on the Billboard Top 200. Uh, the album spawned four Top 40 chart singles. However, the only track that was a major, only the title track was a major hit, peaking at 15. So Miranda's first album, the only biggest song topped out at 15, and now she's the queen. You know what's wild about that? It, she's probably only had five or six number ones to yeah. this point, which is crazy. Yeah. Because I mean, she's had a great 
Yeah, they incredibly all incredibly great career. Yeah, and the in radio for what and she's got she's one of my favorites ever. And oh, yeah. um um yeah, radio will give her a hit with a with a duet and stuff, but it's like Pat, she's got like most of these artists guys, the radio is the radio and it's great and I love it. Uh but get these albums and go listen to all the tracks. I promise you there's going to be two or three tracks that weren't the big radio hit that you're going to love as much or more than whatever the radio hit is cuz all these artists have just include I mean everyone that I can think of the, there's another track on there to me that I that's my jam, you know, and you'll find your own jam on these records. So um All right, she's had 10. 10. So same as me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is you would think she'd have And, and she's put out I yeah. mean no telling how many. Um Just crazy, mm-hmm. but but incredible career and talent and well deserved and all that. But anyway, well, should we go eat? Yeah, we need to. I was gonna pull something up real quick here for our um, June twenty fifty two for our um, For usually we have a guest on the show. We do a country song on their birthday, and this this week, since we don't have a guest, I thought since we were talking about him, the old uh, maniac kid himself, uh, John Goodman, was born June twentieth of fifty two. What was the number one? Oh, what a good one! Want we'll to take a stab at what the hmm. nineteen fifty two? It's going to be hard to even get this one. He was a Hank. Cocker, a uh, snow? Mm-mm. It's 52. See, this is what we were saying about that show Fandango. This is stuff they throw out, and a coal miner from Kentucky goes, Wild Side of Life, Hank Thompson. That fast, you know, and you're like, Wow. You know, that's how, remember on that show, though, that's how fast they're spitting this out for 52. That's even hard on me. I mean, I'm you throw me some guesses or some, you know, this stuff. But anyway, the number one song, June 20th, 1952, the day that John Goodman was born, is Wild Side of Life by Mr. Hank Thompson. Good hit there. Good record. Legend uh, all the way around. But, yeah, March Madness is here. Y'all go get your brackets in if you hadn't already. Y'all go win all that big money. I know somebody's going to get it. Might as well be, be you, and you must be present to win. Um, as we've said, this show will come out on Thursday, and on this Friday, the 18th, we're going to be playing in Little Rock with King George Strait. Looking forward to that. Uh, next week, as Justin mentioned, he's going to be off with the family, uh, doing a little vacay for spring break for them. So there will not be a podcast out next week. Uh, so y'all stay tuned uh, to the following week. We'll get you one there. Um, then we're going to go. We've got our first, uh, our next show uh, of the year, April 2nd in Lafayette, Alabama. Going to be a big time down there. Looking forward to uh, playing a show in my home state. Uh, then we're going to be Hiawassee, Georgia on the 9th of April. Um, and then we kick off uh, our shows with our old buddy Granger and his bunch on uh, April 22nd uh, down in Pensacola, Florida. So any of these shows um, that you can make in your area, go get some tickets now while there's some left. Um, look on justinmoremusic.com. We're going to have all the tour dates uh, that we've got booked so far. And I know some people have mentioned to me about different areas. Are we going to try to get here or get there? Uh, we have, we've got more dates. We're going to announce that we're working on some logistics and stuff. So hopefully we're going to get to all your cities this year. And if we don't, uh, we'll be there soon. I promise. And so come to a show and see us. Um, until then, listen to all the Justin Moore, po- uh, Justin Moore podcast episodes. If you hadn't heard them all already, tell your friends about it, like rate, subscribe, you know, review all that fun stuff. Go listen to Justin and all those other knuckleheads on Morning Mayhem uh, on the Buzz app. And before we get out of here, uh, rest in peace to uh, Scott Hall. Oh, yeah, got that yesterday. The uh, Scott Hall Razor Ramon. Uh, I talked talked about that today on the radio show. As big of, and I a, wish you had been on there because obviously you're more knowledgeable yeah um one of the one of the uh, i mean was he a bad guys razor ramon too because i don't remember that that was his whole thing he was always a heel uh early on in florida when he first came out he had a mustache kind of he was a good guy but then when he went to he changed that whole character and he basically just talked like scarface slicked his hair back and was like hey chico i'm the bad guy and that was where razor ramon that was his first time going to wwe or WWF as we knew it, and then um, had a huge run there. And then when the Monday Night War started, he and Kevin Nash and Hogan started the NWO, 
And that's what really kicked it off into, I mean, the stratosphere. Hogan money and all the fame in the 80s with WrestleMania and stuff was huge. But uh, that era in the 90s took it to a whole nother level. I mean, it was everybody talking about it. And Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, a.k.a. the Diamond, his first, one of his first gig, the Diamond Stud, working with our dear friend Diamond Dallas Page. Dallas was his manager, and they were part tag partners together and stuff. So, wow. uh, yeah, I want to say uh, condolences to his family and uh, Dallas and, and Kev and – uh, X Pac and all those guys who were who were tight with uh, with Scott. So prayers up to you guys. He was young, yeah. sixty three. Yeah, had a had a had a hip injury and had surgery and complications of that. Yeah, I think I read somewhere where it was like he had like three heart attacks or something or strokes or something mm. back to back to back due to complications of hip surgery, mm. which is it's just kind of unbelievable. But uh, but yeah, condolences. Uh, thoughts and prayers to his family but uh but anyway uh thank you guys again for 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 tuning in listening watching uh etc the podcast uh if you happen to be in little rock tomorrow as you listen to this yep we'll see you at the uh the show with the king that's right i just got a i just got a, a twitter message here from tim johnson old t- TJ Hogg, uh, this week I get to see Justin and JR in Little Rock. Hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Yes, you Love will. It. We'll see you there in just a few days. Um, oh, that was another thing I was going to say. Jesse Barker hit me up about – we talked about a show somewhere and he didn't find anything about it yet. Some of this stuff we mentioned on here, we I don't know if they want us to yet, but I just do it anyway. So some of this stuff may not be it on the website. It could be pending. It, yeah, or, the, or the, we, they just haven't released – sale yet and stuff so just uh get on the uh justinmoremusic.com and we're gonna we'll we'll do all the exclusives here we'll we'll tell you about everything right. when something comes new so if there's questions on here that you're asking and stuff um as far as stuff with with travel and shows and different uh types of things we're doing um we'll make sure to mention on here and everything goes to justin's website no matter what uh mine's more of a link to just podcast things and my little crap i've got going on but all of our tour stuff and dates and tickets uh, VIPs, meet and greets, any of that kind of stuff will be on the website. So just go there and you can get all this info. Um, and yeah, spread the word about the podcast. Had a good time. Looking forward to having some guests in a couple of weeks. Um, thank y'all for always sending in, um, using the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast, sending us in questions and comments, keeping this thing rolling. And yeah, we'll see y'all at the show soon. See you soon. Thanks, guys. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 26, close call in the Rockies. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans 8, 28. We were 15 miles up a snowmobile trail in the beautiful Colorado backcountry, running in perfect powder and enjoying the views you can only find in the Rocky Mountains when my left hand started feeling numb. I also noticed a numbness in my left foot and the left side of my jaw, and I knew something out of the ordinary was happening. I told my friends who were riding along with me that I needed to head back down to the trailhead. I was the longest, that was the longest 15 miles of my life coming down off that mountain, feeling almost certain I was having a stroke. Fortunately, we were on the same side of Durango, Colorado, as Mercy Hospital. We could have easily been 50 miles in another direction, so the trip to the emergency room was short. I was immediately given a scan to confirm that I was having a stroke caused by a blood clot on the right side of my brain. I was given a shot of TPA to dissolve it. To be effective, the shot needs to be administered within a set amount of time after the stroke begins. I had only 15 or 20 minutes left by the time I got to the emergency room and was diagnosed. A medically equipped plane was, was available. They took me to Swedish Medical Center in Denver, one of the finest stroke hospitals in the country. I was treated and released in two days with little permanent damage from the stroke. Here's the only kicker. Mercy Regional Medical Center in Durango had only stocked the Clotbuster TPA in their pharmacy three months prior. Had they not done it, I could have not had gotten it in time to limit the damage. Angels watching? Indeed. Don't let fear of the unknown hinder the way you live your life. 
remember, you're in good hands. Let's all make the day count.